Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional Check-in team number 1732 Hilltoppers coming in out of Milwaukee. And to help me talk about this incredible robot they have, I have Miles, Adit, and Owen. And this team here already won regional win under the belt. As we're recording this, they're the number one seed as well, too. This is just a very consistent robot. If you watch some of their shots as they go through, very accurate all over the field. I can't wait to show you more about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick 'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So we're going to start out with the intake of your robot here. Talk to me about uh, just some of the concept design. Like, did you make any iterations or was this the first kind of design you went with for the season? Right. So what was really nice this year, we got a laser cutter. So that allowed us to iterate this intake many, many times very rapidly. And with that, we were able to perfect the geometry, make sure it's working exactly how we want to. And that allowed us to, you know, have this super reliable, consistent and robust intake that you see on the robot now. Um, kind of going over a couple of the big things with this. We have polycarb side plates and then a metal um, side plate on the intake. And that gives us the flexibility and the rigidity that we need to be able to take the hits, um, but also be strong and consistent with the way we're intaking the balls. Um, another thing with that, we have the compliant wheels here that allows us to get a very nice, smooth intake motion. And then the mechanums help center the balls and feed it into our centering wheels here. Now these centering wheels, these centering wheels take it and feed it up through our S-curve into our indexer wheel. And that indexer wheel will keep it and it will sit and spin on the indexer wheel on the little feeder wheel up in there. And that feeder wheel then will throw it up into the shooter. So a couple of questions uh, in regards to this. Uh, one of the things I love that you mentioned, by the way, is that you, you kind of got the best of both worlds for this, right? You have a, uh, a compliant intake, but it's also very rigid here. So right. you're able to take some of the hits if you need to, uh, able to go through. Talk to me a little bit, uh, your, your decision from a packaging standpoint to kind of go with the S-curve in your robot. How's that been working out for you? So this year, um, we knew climb was going to be important, but we didn't exactly know how it was going to work out. So when we were designing the majority of um, our robot, aside from the climbers, we wanted to make it as compact as possible. And one way that we could do that was do a more vertical integration in our ball path. So by taking and doing a slight S-curve that you see here, it allows us to get that entire shooter and intake package in a very small form, giving us plenty of room for the rest of our electronics and climbers. Let's keep moving on to robot. Let's hand it over to Ded, who's going to talk about your uh, shooter. A uh, couple things I'd love to hear about on this is uh, your choice. you got four Colson wheels coming through. That's a lot of uh, uh, flywheel weight going into it. Uh, and then I'd love to hear what you're doing with your limelight because you're doing something a little bit different with that too. Right. Um, so we have four wheels here and a bunch of wheels here uh, just for more stability in our shot so that it goes straight no matter what. Um, so as Miles said, it feeds up into the shooter um, and it gets fed into the hood. And the hood has two... Um, positions it can it can change to based on the distance of uh, calculated by the limelight um, and so that's all actuated by by pneumatics um, so yeah if it's at the top position then it shoots with a different velocity than um, than at the bottom position um, and overall it leads to a pretty consistent shot all around uh, and then from your limelight uh, you mentioned like pre before you're doing kind of more a uh, pixel setup tell me more about that right so the limelight sees the vision target all the way over there, and it uh, sees how many pixels down uh, from the camera it is at. And so it uses that and uses some trigonometry to calculate the distance from uh, the shooter to the vision target so that essentially we can shoot from anywhere. Makes sense. It's been working out really well for you, obviously, right. uh, as we go through. Uh, let's start to wrap up on this machine. Uh, we'll hand it. Uh, over to Owen, who's going to talk about your uh, climber on here. And this has obviously been a big centerpiece of your team, big reason why you've been the number one seed, of course, at your previous event and going into this one. Uh, so talk to me about what's gone into it, and then let's uh, do a little demonstration and talk about your climb sequence too. Yeah, so 
Initially, when we were designing our climber, we debated between either going for the high bar and then allowing us more time to continue shooting or working to the traversal. So we did choose to go to the high bar, allowing for more time for our shooter to work the field, grab a couple more points that, and more than what we would gain from just moving to the traverse. We have a two hook set system where first off uh, we have, here you might want to back up a little bit, all uh, the intake extends and then these will tilt backwards. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. So all four extend and then at that point we are right near the bar. Miles will drive the robot forward so that these are over the first bar, it, at which point they will pull downwards onto the bar. Oh gosh, here we go. And then these will come back in and grab the second bar. So at which point we will pull them back in, add the pneumatic brakes, and we will be hanging on the second bar. So a couple unique things about this climber is we have pneumatic brakes on every single module. So these two brake systems are tied together and these two brake systems are tied together. If you look down in here, uh, those two little tubes move to a slight piston that'll push into a sprocket, at which point it'll lock the gear that rotates these upwards and downwards. Um, in order to pull them back down, we have a string connected to that gear and to push them up, we have constant force springs uh, at the, these kind of extension points. So as mentioned a little bit earlier in regards to packaging, and you designed a lot of your robot to be uh, around your climber, but what made you go with this type of climber design versus some of the other ones we've seen out there? So part of it is complexity. This is very simple. We've sure. done a telescopic climber in the past, whereas using a windmill style or some of the other stuff we've seen that use chains and a lot of sprockets would be a lot more complex, difficult, and we did this slightly last minute. So we're experienced with this style of climber and it was pretty quick to put together, especially when we didn't work for the traversal, spending other time focusing on limelight targeting, distance tracking and shooting, and then kind of adding this on at the end for those extra quick points. Well, 1732 Hilltoppers, your team has been looking absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, your first event, absolutely dominant. This event, you're doing great as well, too. So can't wait to see your results. And of course, good luck at this event. And can't wait to see you at World Championships in uh, a few weeks as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.